Now, look, what also I think is very interesting is, you know, there are drugs that I've seen prescribed regularly um, throughout our hospital. I've even used these things at times because, you know, there's, of course, data is not always perfectly agreed upon in the scientific community, right? You know, this is, I'm reading you off recommendations by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, you know, some, an organization that I really respect. But, you know, it basically said that these medicines that are over the counter are not recommended for treating either sleep onset or maintenance insomnia. Let's talk about the first one, denphenhydramine, Benadryl. Okay, so we were looking at Benadryl doses of 50 milligrams, pretty regular dose. You know, you could buy this over the counter. So 50 milligrams, it helped with sleep latency by reducing that by a whopping eight minutes. Okay. Disappointing. Right. Um, improved total sleep time by 12 minutes. Okay. So, you know, there's a 95% confidence interval that, you know, it led to roughly, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily perfect, you know, 13 minutes to 38 minutes, but you know, the quality of sleep said no real improvement in quality of sleep. Next drug, melatonin, reduced sleep latency by Good old nine minutes. Quality of sleep was small. You know, it was looking at a relatively low dose of melatonin. This study was actually only looking at two milligrams. I've seen patients take as high as, what's the highest you've seen? 12? I've seen definitely 10. 12, yes, I see that a lot. Right. Melatonin is the one thing that really confuses me. I feel like if there's ever a placebo effect with anything, it's got to mm -hmm. be with melatonin. Mm -hmm. Because the way that melatonin naturally works and functions in your brain is it doesn't induce sleep. All it does is it signals to your brain that it's time to sleep. So right. if you can kind of imagine um, if you're running a race, right? The role of melatonin is that guy at the start line that kind of fires the gun and says, go, right? right? It does nothing to actually induce sleep. It just signals to your body that, hey, it's time to fall asleep. So if you take that, if you take melatonin, you can, you can synthetically induce that timer to go off. But the other mechanisms in your body that naturally actually help you to fall asleep aren't really necessarily being activated at the same time. Um, so we, we talked about Matt, Matthew Walker last time, right. the kind of the guru on sleep. Um, I read in his book that melatonin can be helpful in stuff like jet lag, where that right. timing mechanism is really thrown off. But for any other type of insomnia, there doesn't seem to be much clinical evidence based on it. But at the same time, we've seen that patients love melatonin. A lot of our patients certainly mm -hmm. ask for it. They're on it on a standing basis, and it seems to be helping them. So placebo effect? Possibly. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe yes, maybe no. You know, I get really frustrated because I've seen, even in the hospital setting, the 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 dumb use of melatonin. You know, my understanding is it at least takes, you know, a little bit of time, and it is a little big part of the timing mechanism. You know, so if you are going to use melatonin to try to gain meaningful sleep, it needs to be taken within an hour, two, three hours of when you want to ideally go to sleep. So what I advise my patients a lot is, hey, you're trying to go to bed at 10. You should probably take your dose of melatonin if you want to try it, maybe around 7, 7 p.m. or so, roughly. You know, and I'll see sometimes these melatonin PRN orders, they give it to the patient at 3 a.m. It's like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? Well, patient what are we for doing it. here? Patient asked for it, right? <laughs> right. That's usually yeah, the story. Like, um, now, one, one drug that I use very frequently, I see a lot of psychiatrists use, uh, primary care doctors, trazodone. You know, trazodone led to a uh, uh, mean reduction in sleep latency. Remember, that's the ability to actually fall asleep by 10 minutes. OK, um, and then it also had patients did report difficulty falling or waking up, excuse me, after sleep onset of eight minutes. Um, real no improvement in the quality of sleep that was reported. Um, this was looking at a 50 milligram dose of trazodone, something we regularly use again. So that's actually one thing I found very, very surprising. You know, I feel like that's a medicine that a lot of prescribers feel more comfortable giving for sleep as opposed to benzodiazepine or these Z drugs. Maybe it's not actually helping as much as we think. The evidence seems to suggest that it's not doing anything. Maybe not anything, but, you know, not enough. Barely anything. Not enough to, you know, w maybe the, the harms outweigh the benefits, right? Maybe there is some benefit. To say there's zero, I always think, is unfair. But, you know, the, the potentially the harms outweigh the benefits, okay?